Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is I, your pal Al, here with our bestie of the channel, Anthony. Hi. And we're back! We're here to react to episode 3 of Heartstopper, season 2. Episode 3, and get those predictions wrong again, honey. <laughs> we're not binging it, we're doing a couple episodes at a time. Please, no spoilers. I'm not looking at uh, the internet for spoilers so these are real prediction whether they are wrong or right what's new with you anthony what's been going on well um me and my husband uh got streptococcus we got that last weekend and so we've been on antibiotics and getting over it um so feeling better today but um good old amoxicillin yeah yeah i went to uh, empty school what happened in the last couple episodes the boys are boys in dating tau loves l from the last episode yes declaring his intent i do to declare l out kind of too late though because l's kind of moved on she has uh and i don't know if she is i mean i mean come on they're probably gonna get together but uh it's going to be a journey what about you what about you any more dates uh no dates not really i just i don't know i'm just a single girl in the world that wants to go to olive garden with no one to go with clap if you care all right let's move on ikea oh my gosh did tao just reference 500 days of summer <laughs> i might be in love with tao now <laughs> okay oh hey. oh gosh hey, here we go here we go yeah we're sorry about what happened at the cinema we should have spoken up oh thanks i know you and charlie are pretty good mates say it say it tell him tell him Oh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's annoying when people think we're best friends. <laughs> oh, not the fist. I'm gonna tell some of the rugby players in this. <laughs> this is too cute. I'm too foul. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh! oh my gosh. Now she's like, y'all are effing in the showers. Okay, ally! Protective adults! <laughs> ah! Oh, let's go to Paris, baby! Oh my gosh, child. I was definitely a procrastinator, just like Charlie. Oh, for sure. But I still got my stuff done, and I still got good grades. <laughs> I mean, I'm still a procrastinator. Always will be. You go home now. Please. Please leave. I don't like that teacher. He's very aggressive. <laughs> Aw, Tara! And the girlfriend. Pinky. What do you think they're going to be grouped with? Isaac and Tao. Oh, yeah. Duh. Where is Tao? Oh, no. It's a grand gesture. Oh. No, it's a grand gesture. Hi. <laughs> oh, no. It's going to be crazy. The hair. Oh, that's sweet. 
Oh, working out. They finally did it. Let's see if it'll last. So cool. So suave. Holding hands right away? Wow. Well, I mean, they're close friends already, so. True, true. Oh, not the Wes Anderson. Okay, Tao, you're you're stepping it up. All the gay kids stay together. I just like how this this whole like you know coming out story, and then there's the Isaac in the back. He's like, we're just gonna do our thing. Oh no, is it gonna be too strong? Is it gonna be too strong? Okay, in front of everyone. Come on. Oh, that's so cute. I can I lay next to someone and look at their eyes. Ugh. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for it. Oh, too strong. Too strong. Too strong? Oh. I don't know. I've, this is... She looks like a Barbie. Oh, no. There's no sparks. This is not a... There's not the time and place, baby. Not the time and place. <gasps> it's that guy. I'm like... Oh. Not feeling it. You really should have picked that movie. Are they a Bernie man? What is going on? I didn't know you invited them. Yeah. They're my friends. Oh no, here we go. Oh. Here we go. I don't understand what I did wrong tonight. It's like you were trying to be a completely different person. You're the one who's completely different. You've gone off with your new friends and have forgotten I exist completely. You're the oh one who no. Said we always put our friendship first. Promise. Well, I guess romance does ruin friendship. <gasps> oh my god. Self-destructive behavior, baby. Self-destructive. I tried too hard, and I talked too much. I ruined everything. Yes. Aww, Tao. I've liked him for so long, and it just hurts. I'm gonna go home. Charlie, make your friend stay there. Is he gonna follow him? Oh. Oh. He said, I need to go get my man. I need to go get my man right now. Ooh, you better tell him off, sister. I'm taking you home. Aww. Is he okay? Oh, he'll be fine. Just a bit of sunstroke, probably. I did tell him to put a hat on when he took me home out today. So lucky to have you, Charlie. He's lucky to have you, Olivia Coleman. <laughs> Accepting and warm and nice. You're making me cry. Just from that small interaction? Yes! Oop, a little close there. <laughs> oh, well. I don't want to be hidden. Part of me just wants everyone to know you're my boyfriend. It is a weird concept to have to come out when it's something that straight couples don't have to do. Yeah. Or think about. Okay, that was a roller coaster. A <laughs> roller coaster again. It was. It was like I thought. The, I thought Tao and Al were good, and then. Just like 500 Days of Summer, your reality versus your expectations are never gonna be the same. But this is like a wholesome show, so like eventually things are supposed to work out. But um, yeah. Uh, I, see, I thought that Tao doing that gesture was brave and like super brave. Like me, I would never grant gestures. I'd be like, hi, um, I, I got this for you. But getting full makeover done, roses, date idea, like, okay, Tao, you're, you're getting better in my books. I, I thought his heart was in the right place. He did a lot of good things to, you know, woo L, but ultimately it translated into like 
trying too hard trying too hard changing too much to you know try and be with Elle so I don't know do you remember the first time you told someone you loved them no <laughs> really do you remember the first time you told Damien you loved him the exact moment no yes oh my gosh Anthony is such an Aquarius he is so unemotional I remember a certain other first moments just not uh... saying I love you yeah I remember when I was dating someone when I was like 17 18 out of high school I was talking them for like two years and i was coming i was walking home from the gym one day and i was usually after the gym i would just run around the whole block so i was doing that and they call me and they're having a bad day I'm talking on the phone and i was walking i remember the, literally the house i was walking by and like right when i was like saying something to them a car was coming past me and they said like I don't know why you like put up with me or like listen to me talk about this stuff. And I was like, oh, it's just, you know, the reason why I could love you. But you know, all the part that they heard was a car going by and then me saying, I love you. They're like, what'd you say? And I was like, ah, uh, nothing. It's out of context. Don't worry. They're like, no, say what you said. And I said, no, 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 because it was out of context. You know, like, don't worry about it. Um, I'm almost home though. They're like, just say it again. And I'm like, I don't want to put pressure on you. I don't want to put pressure on me. And they're like, just fucking say it. And I was like, I, I, I love you. And they're like, okay, I love you too. I'm like, oh my gosh, why, why did you make me go through all this if you just were ready to say it too? Well, that's a big, that's a big like to do or like a big memorable thing that happened. Um, I remember exactly where I was, yeah. Like I remember certain things. I just, I don't know. I guess I don't remember that moment because I don't even know if we really had it because we were best friends before we even started dating. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I loved him before we started dating. So, I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, Isaac and this boy yeah okay i'm here for it i like that i thought he was asexual but okay did we like be know that he was potentially gay before no okay but i mean I he, he, he is hanging out with the only gay kid in school so yeah and i i mean i didn't think it was like obviously it's not a big deal or whatever but i just i like this contrast of charlie and nick and like tau and l and then i but we aren't focusing on his relationship it's just like happening yeah opposed to all of the problems centered around tau l and then charlie and nick true 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 do you remember when you first came out to someone so i remember the same person i told i love them i was in the car driving with my best friend at the time we were like we used to go like to freaking winco and buy pies and eat in the back of my truck bed and i remember i was picking her up from her house and we were at a stop sign and like i I think this is literally like days or something after I told them I love them. And so I'm like thinking in my head, like, just like Charlie, just like Nick. I'm like, if I'm telling this person I love them and I want to be with them, I should be able to express that I'm with them or interested in them and it'd be okay. And so I was like parked at the stoplight because like it was like a good like 15 seconds I was there because it was like middle of the night. And I'm like, I have something to tell you. She's just like looking at me. And I'm like, I just don't want it to affect anything. I don't want it to... <laughs> she probably thought I was going to say I love her or something. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, like, I, ha I'm i kind of talking to someone. I'm, like, kind of seeing them. And I just want you to know that he is someone I'm dating. And she goes, I love that! <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> okay. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I just said that. It helped that she's a lesbian and she's already been out as a lesbian. Yeah. But it's just the fact of you coming to terms with it and then saying it aloud and you are putting it out there. You know, these things that you're feeling inside you internally that people might think or say about you, you know, they can't use against you and you want to protect that and hold that because, you know, as soon as it's out, you're going to have to take it all. That was it. And yeah, I mean, I haven't told my parents fuck they don't i don't need to tell them <laughs> everyone that i came out to that i can remember they were always just like yeah i know i hate that i hate it, that that was like that's kind of like one of the reasons why i never really wanted to come out was because like it would, it's like confirming what everyone else already knew about me that i was like so hard trying not for it to be true so like i like almost like i wanted to be spiteful and not have them proved right. Correct. And that was 
big hurdle or hump that I had to get over. Do you think that's also uh, like due to like internalized homophobia? Because you you grew up religious, didn't you? No. Oh, you did. <laughs> no, no one died at Stonewall. Mm -hmm. People were killed. Nobody they were was killed at Stonewall. Nobody was Nobody killed. Was killed at Stonewall. I mean, I had uh, grandparents who were religious, but my parents are not religious. My mom is religious now, but growing up, she wasn't. I, I didn't go to like church or anything. Oh, I just love Nick's mom being so. Okay, it's Nick's mom being comforting, warm, inviting. The rugby captain, coach, lady being like if they if those boys give you any trouble you let me know because me and my lesbianism are gonna kick their booties and i love that i love that you know us as older millennial queer people are i think more you know conscious of creating safe spaces for younger queer kids you know we were we are the people that we needed when we were younger and now we're giving it to those kids and i i love that this is another reason why I think this show is really good and also like kind of a first of its kind is because at every turn where there would normally be conflict with the generalized or stereotypical gay coming out story, there is like the opposite of what you would expect. Oh like, yeah. The supportive teacher, the supportive coach, the supportive mom, the supportive <laughs> dad, the supportive supportive friends like it's just like the supportive sister it's like a very i think it's a new normal and i'm gonna well, stick yeah. with that yeah that's what i mean and it's very affirming which is something that is historically when it comes to gay coming out stories is very non-stereotypical so. oh yeah i thought when the coach caught them she was gonna be like y'all can't be in the locker room together because i don't want no hanky panky in there okay <laughs> No hanky panky in no, my. Either way, this was a good episode. I did enjoy it. I did too. There's a couple of cringe moments. Um, but that's good acting, baby. That's good acting then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the episode. I'm glad everyone is here. Watch it with us. Let us know your guys' coming out story. Hopefully it was okay. Hopefully y'all were safe. I love that everyone is gathering around the show and rallying behind it. Yes. And I love positive gay uh, representation. Thank you. Yes. That was the episode. Thank you, Anthony, for being here with me. My pleasure. We will catch everyone in our next reaction video. Till then, peace.